Kevin Miller joined by U.S. Senator Tom Cotton. Good morning to you, sir. How are you doing today? Hey, good morning, Kevin. Happy New Year to you and all the listeners. Big day in El Dorado yeah. uh, 107 years ago. <laughs> good quick math there. I like that. Very nice. All right. Uh, what happens when an American company says nothing about communist censorship? This involved Apple removing a app, a New York Times app, from their store in China. If you would explain what happened there. Well, Apple does big business in China, uh, but the Chinese government is still run by the Chinese Communist Party, uh, and they do not allow any kind of freedom of expression or speech and, and asked Apple to remove the New York Times from their app store so Chinese uh, users of Apple products couldn't um, access it. I, I think that's a disgrace, um, particularly when Apple is still not cooperating fully with law enforcement uh, at the federal, state, and local level to try to ensure that, uh, that subject to a valid court order, law enforcement can get access to text messages or other data on an iPhone. Um, I wish a great American company like Apple would be more uh, you know, ardently in defense of freedom of speech around the world. You know, Facebook and Google, for instance, don't answer to Beijing's demands, uh, and I wish they'd cooperate a little bit more with law enforcement in our country. I don't have access to the Apple Store in China, obviously. Uh, do they have access to other news providers, or is this just... Yeah, there's a, you know, I think everybody knows about the the, so-called, the Great Wall of China. There's a so-called Great Firewall, mm-hmm. uh, which the Chinese government has uh, erected around the Internet in China, and they go to great lengths to keep free and fair expression, uh, particularly about the Chinese Communist Party and its government, away from its own people. Senator Tom Cotton, you had a chance to talk to Director of National Intelligence James Clapper and also Director of National Security Admiral Mike Rogers about uh, foreign threats to the U.S., particularly Russian cyber attacks. Uh, What came of those meetings? Well, we had a good hearing last week in the Armed Services Committee. We'll have another one today with the Intelligence Committee. Um, You know, I've read both the unclassified and the classified version of this report, um, and I have no reason to doubt the conclusions that Russian intelligence services or their affiliates hacked into the DNC uh, and into John Podesta's email. Uh, however, that is just small potatoes compared to the crimes and provocations that Russia has committed against the United States over the last eight years, whether it's beating our diplomats on the doorstep of our embassy in Moscow or running an illegal illegal spy ring in our country for decades, uh, invading sovereign countries, providing missiles to rebels who use them to shoot civilian aircraft out of the sky. This is just one small instance of what Russia has done uh, to hurt U.S. interests around the world. Moreover, the report itself says that this is this was an escalation of Russia's activities. Well, they escalated because Barack Obama has allowed them to think that they can get away with this kind of uh, activity. And I think it's particularly harmful when the media and Democrats go from the specific facts at hand, that there were two hacks of the DNC and Mr. Podesta's email, and use phrases like hack the election or undermine our democracy. That in itself is doing Vladimir Putin's work for him because it is elevating his stature and his uh, reputation for power in our elections and therefore any elections around the world. Because ultimately, Russia did not cost Hillary Clinton this election. Hillary Clinton lost the election because she ran a poor campaign on the failed policies of Barack Obama. You know, no one in Michigan or Wisconsin was voting for Donald Trump because Vladimir Putin had released some embarrassing emails from Democratic operatives in Washington, D.C. Uh, Senator, you've also issued a few warnings to the new administration here uh, in that, you know, yeah, they tend to say that this is politicized, uh, but you say they need to pay attention to intelligence. Do you feel like they're not taking this seriously? No, so, uh, so Donald Trump, after his briefing with those same uh, intelligence agency leaders on Friday acknowledge that, that Russia has taken aggressive actions, as has China. Um, I, I would counsel them to take the threat that Russia poses very seriously. Again, this, this hack of the DNC and John Podesta's email is just two small examples of Russian aggression. Um, and uh, Donald Trump is, is uh, right to be concerned about some of the leaks that have been coming over the last month about this matter uh, that seem uh, um, intended to cast a pall over his election. 
and to drive a wedge between him and the intelligence community. Based on the timing of matters, I suspect those leaks don't come from the intelligence agencies. I suspect they come from senior White House officials. Um, but you know, we need to distinguish between the inappropriate conduct of sen senior White House officials in handling this matter and the underlying threat that Russia poses, uh, again, not just on these two specific hacks, but the activities they've undertaken against U.S. interests for the last eight years. Senator Tom Cotton, Republicans with Obamacare repeal it, or do they need to have an alternative in place before they do it? Yes. <laughs> okay. So we, we obviously... Uh, need to repeal Obamacare. We had a lot of problems with our health care system seven years ago. Uh, Obamacare has made those problems worse. So we need to focus on fixing the problems. That starts with repealing Obamacare, but it also requires us to get real solutions to problems like increasing cost of premiums and co-pays, narrowing networks of doctors, people who can't afford uh, to get into health, uh, the health insurance market in the first place. Um, for six years, the Republican Party has not coalesced around a single uh, solution. That's understandable because when you're in the opposition, you don't have a single leader of your party to help with that. However, now that Donald Trump is taking office and we control Congress, it's up to us to coalesce around that solution, and we need to do so sooner rather than later because it's not going to get any easier to solve these very complicated problems in 2018 or 2019. Senator Cotton, confirmation hearings uh, start today. Uh, will you be sitting in on any of those? Uh, I have no confirmation hearings today. I have three on Thursday uh, for Jim Mattis to be Secretary of Defense, Mike Pompeo to be Director of the CIA, and Ben Carson to be the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. So it will be a busy day bouncing between committee hearings for me, but I've met uh, all of these men. Uh, Mike Pompeo is among my very closest friends in the uh, Congress, and we've traveled around the world together doing oversight uh, of the intelligence community. And I look forward to both all three of those hearings. I look forward to supporting their nominations. Senator Tom Cotton, thank you for the insight. Thank you. Have a great day. 747 Bye -bye. News Radio 1029 KARN. Our headlines.